Hello everyone, welcome to Glory Room. I'm Prophetess Lou. Hope you all are having a blessed day. Before we get started, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for loving us and taking care of us. Most of all, we thank you for saving our soul. Father God, we ask you today to be with us. We ask you to help us to uh, hear your voice when you speak. Help us to apply this word to our lives, Father God. Help us to be hearers and doers of your, of your word, Father God. Father God, we ask you to bless the ones that are hearing it and bless the ones that are reading it in Jesus' name. So today, Sunday, we always have a new memory verse of the week, and our memory verse is 1 Corinthians six fourteen. And God raised the Lord, and also will also raise up, raise us up by His power. 1 Corinthians six fourteen. Verse of the day, Proverbs thirty and twelve. There are those who are clean in their own eyes, but are not washed of their filth. Subject: You are not disqualified. Christian truth. So I'm gonna say it behind, and pause behind each one to give you the opportunity to say it if you like. I am forgiven. I'm qualified. I'm looking for more. I'm a child of the king. Many things would disqualify us from getting certain things like a credit card. We have to have the credit credit score and good payment history. Playing on sports team, we must know how to play that particular sport, be an asset to the team, maybe even previously played on the team, or be competitive. And even when we get a job, we must have experience working on a job similar to the one where tr you're trying to get hired for. That's what qualifies a person, well, sometimes. These things qualify you. And sometimes we aren't qualified. It is frustrating because we try hard to mark off everything required to do some things. And sometimes we make it and sometimes we don't. Still with God, we don't have to be qualified to be loved by him. We don't have to be qualified to be spirit led. We often think God disqualifies us when we sin and he doesn't. God wants us to ensure that we are ready for our calling. <clears throat> he wants to ensure we are ready to go to the next level. Look at Peter. You would think Jesus would have done away with Peter the moment he lied and left him high and dry. You would you would think Jesus would have said, no, not Peter. Most people would never let Peter back into their lives. But what Jesus did was he qualified him because he knew what Peter had on the inside. He knew who Peter was because Peter was his own. And a lot of times people in places don't know us. They have to get to know us. But with Jesus, we don't have to wait. We don't have to put on a show. We just have to be who we are. And that's what qualifies us. Luke 22 and 60 through 62. But Peter said, man, I don't know what you're talking about. And immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered this saying to the Lord, how he had said to him before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and he wept bitterly. Jesus doesn't look at our mistakes and hold them over our heads. No, he doesn't. Not at all. We might have that feeling, but that's not what happens. Jesus wants us to come to him so that we can be forgiven. And a lot of us hold on to our sin and won't ask for forgiveness because we feel we don't have to. But sometimes not asking for forgiveness can cause our blessings to be held back. Our relationship with God, relationship with him not to grow because we must, dis, we must dis, disqualify ourselves by not asking for forgiveness. Second Samuel 11 and 2, one evening David got up from his bed and walked around the palace roof. From the roof he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. David knew what he, he shouldn't be doing, which was looking upon a woman on his roof. He knew what his intentions was and he wanted and what he wanted. But did this disqualify him from being king? No, it didn't. David even counted the men after he was told not to. Did this disqualify him? No, it didn't. Our sins <clears throat> aren't what disqualifies us. It's what we do about the sin we are committing. Do we have a contrite heart or are we allow it to linger? See, these two men didn't allow what their sins did to linger. Well, David did briefly and Nathan had to come to show him the punishment God had given him. But it didn't disqualify him. Now, I'm not saying we won't get punished. It's not what I'm saying. We, we won't feel the guilt of what we did. But what we must do when we have identified a sin in our life that we can't let go of, we must go to God and ask him for forgiveness. And then fast. A lot of people don't want to fast because they don't want to sacrifice to get closer to God. Friends, to live in the power of God, we must fast. The moment I had a woman of God to explain to me the importance of fasting, I started fasting more. I started to walk in more power because I didn't let food or anything be a master over me. Look at Nimba. They were told about their wrongdoings and had everyone was and he and he had everyone on a fast and no one could eat including the animals they thought it would if 
we all fast this way. Maybe God will relent his hand over us. We must be extreme about our life with Christ or about our relationship with Christ. Some people think we don't have to be extreme. But to walk in authority of God, we must show God how important he is to us. Jonah 3, 7-9. through 9, This is the proclamation he issued in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let people or animals herd or flocks take anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. <clears throat> Who knows? God may yet relent and have passion, compassion, turn, turn from his fierce anger so that we would not perish. We don't have to worry about God disqualifying us. We don't have to worry about God saying no, not Lou. She did this and that. But God says, wants to say, well, Lou, you did this and that. I still love you. You did that. I still forgive you. You did this, I still want you as mine. God won't deny us or throw us to the side. But we push away because we listen to other people about God's opinion about us. And God's opinion don't change. We must learn not to let others tell us what God wants from us and start going to God ourselves. Today we learn that what disqualifies us and we do this on our own. God doesn't. God doesn't. We must stop looking at other people and look to God. We can get a word in. We can get a word in. We don't have. We don't need sister so and so to do it or this man of God to do it. We can speak to him ourselves. But God doesn't stop loving us. He most. He most certainly don't leave us to do things on our own. Every day we have the opportunity to pick up our cross. Every day we have opportunity to say, "Look, Jesus, I need you." Sometimes God is waiting for us to say something about what's happening. But sometimes we don't because we think there's no way he cares if, I, if I'm there or not. And it's a verse in the Bible that says Luke 14, 5 through 6. And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulder. Six, he puts it on his shoulder and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors and says, rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. Do you see what he does? He puts the sheep on his shoulder and he goes home. God wants us to come home. God wants us near him. Some of us are lost because we disqualify ourselves from what we do. But God never said this to us. Today, come back and allow God to comfort you and qualify you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for everything. Thank you for loving and caring for us. Help us to follow and love you. Lord, we give you every aspect of our lives. We ask you right now to forgive us of the sins we have done. Help us to stay focused on you. Give us the strength to be holy, to walk on the path you have for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Our reference, Luke 15 and 7. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repent than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Luke 5 and 32. I have not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. Luke 5 and 32. Matthew, 5, 8, Matthew 18 and 13. And if he finds it, surely I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the 99 that never went astray. Matthew 18 and 13. Further reading, Proverbs 4, Leviticus 4, Jeremiah 8, Malachi 1. This ends, you're not disqualified. The reading time of this devotional is 8 minutes and 30 seconds. I pray you all have a blessed day. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you too. Remember to like, subscribe, and follow on any platform. Remember to share with a family member or a friend. If you have time, please go like us on YouTube and click the notific notification bell for um, notifications when we upload. Also, remember that your memory verse, your verse of the day, your further reading, and your, your reference will be at the bottom, along with links to the devotional for you to read. Have a blessed day.